this before. <laughs> you're fine. You're all right. You, you, you're more welcome to have a drink while we're talking here. It's all good. Nice. Uh, well, okay, everyone. It's now nine o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, it, it's obviously just me tonight. John is unable to join us, but uh, it'll be this week's episodes of Ball Caps and Bagpipes. And obviously, we've got a special guest on, like the, Ivan Hernandez of the Devils, who's going to give us a recap of the game. And then we're going to talk about, about his baseball career and how he ended up in Edinburgh and what it's like to be playing baseball in Colombia. So we'll go to the recap for the game here. And we'll talk about these weekend's games. There were some good ones there. Uh, we had the, the Galaxy be, being the Breakers, 15 to 3. Uh, let's see the game report from the, the that. So it was just. Thank you for having me, Jason, by the way. No it's worries. To interrupt and maybe <laughs> get, get people going and then, then get more people in, in the live stream. And then and you can do a, a whole recap on, on that game. No problem there. Uh, it was a defensive battle, apparently, for the first five winnings until uh, Galaxy uh, put a few through in the last three innings. It was four to three uh, and then ended up 15 to three in the home side. Uh, Tayport say thank you for hosting them. And I'm just trying to see about the else. I said we obviously had the, the developmental gate for them as well. Is it that the Galaxy had reached to 500 this season as they overcame them? Uh, there was a couple of errors it looks like there but they end up being ahead in that one uh, i apologize for not knowing more about the glasgow games there that's usually john's half here and unfortunately he couldn't make it um we had the big game up in was it here was it up in it was in uh, it was in aberdeen so oilers four cannons two uh i was told uh, the the, uh, the cannons didn't have a full squad, but that's no excuse because Stephen Evans was absolutely dominant on the mound there. He had, was it 14 strikeouts? 14 the, Ks. 14 Ks there. And uh, I think it's David Johnson, what, two for three or three RBIs. So he clearly powered the Oilers to that win there. It was a one hitter overall. So Ooh. well pitched for Stephen. Uh, you can't ask for a bit more dominant uh, pitching performance than that there. Uh, that, and that knuckleball. That knuckle knuckle curve or whatever he throws, it's a it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> so that that keeps the second place and third place very tight now with the Cannons five and three and the Comets five and three and the Oilers four and four. So uh, as we found out over the weekend, it will go uh, one and two teams go through with a bye in the tournament weekends, and then three plays six and five plays four. So it's key for whoever gets the second place there and of course we have we thought was the, the game we thought would be the key game from last weekend the devils and comets final score 17 to 2 devils clearly went ahead Ivan why don't you tell us a bit about that game there I mean I think I think we had a little bit of a chip in our shoulder uh we had gone to Glasgow uh a little bit uh without a pitcher so Kyle has been I mean immense for us and we went to Glasgow without him, and they really, they really drove us out of the park, uh, for a way of saying it. So we, we really wanted to get it back. We really wanted to give them back that, that little, you know, uh, feeling of getting run out of our, our park. And, and we did it. We accomplished it. I think we're, we're really good offensively. We have uh, Leo Hernandez is really, really just hitting the ball really well our um our captain and commander el comandante as we call him uh juan is also just third third bat just strong every single outing leo is strong every single outing leo again hit a home run yeah hey, right think, another home run all right yeah another home run it was a three-run home run which is much better than a just a home run <laughs> uh i think offensively our whole lineup is just kind of hitting a lot santino was uh I think the first two innings was really good. And then we kind of figured it out the second time around the order. Again, really strong offensive team, I think we have. And, and I think that's, that's kind of been the key of the Devils. And also having Kyle just be on form. Kyle has been, has been great for us. Uh, our ex-coach or future coach or just our coach, um, the French, uh, Sylvain is back. So he's back at catching, and that's been a great help. He was a first bat this 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 week, and he was he was really good. 
Cool. So uh, interesting question. So I've known Kyle for quite some time there, and, and you've only known Kyle for roughly a year. What do you think the change in Kyle has been? We, we've known he, he, he struggled with, uh, I'd say, control and focus would be his main problems there. And this year, he really seems to put it all together. Do you think it's maybe just a more mature crowd around him that are keeping him on track? Or, or I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. That's interesting. That's an interesting question, I think, because that's the same thing. That's the same question we have. I think Kyle, Kyle's just been enormous. I think having Leo as his catcher at the beginning of the season really helped him. Kind of focusing on just kind of working with the fastball and then going off the fastball to his other pitches, I think was, was something really important at the beginning of the season. I think he, he's really been commanding the strike zone and getting ahead in the count. And that's been really important, I think, in this league. If you're batting with two strikes, it's much, much different affair. And I think it's it's that. Could it, could it be that Kyle also just around the defense that he has now is not pitching more strikes? That could be a thing because we've been solid defensively. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think Lil helped him a lot coming into this season, kind of command the strike zone, do a little bit of a high fastball uh, for strike three. And that's really helped him. And also, I think he's developed a two-seamer. He's kind of been working on a T-seamer, or he says it's a two-seamer. Right. Uh, but it works. It works in this league. He's been dominant against the cannons. I think he's been just lights off. And he that, those cannon games have really been something that the Devils have. I think when we started the season, we looked at the cannons roster, and I think the couple pitches that they added with Peter and, and Harris, we, we really thought it was going to be something that, that was going to be difficult and then but we just didn't count with Kyle just being Kyle and Kyle just being dominant it was it's been a beauty he's so pumped he helps the team with the way that he just pumps himself off and it might be annoying for the other teams but he he just lets go let's fucking go after three <laughs> every three outs I, again I I love him I love him to that I think he's one of those people you'd want him on your team and then he'd spend the rest of the time winding him up for the other team. So, or, 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 yeah, you just don't want him to get ejected from games sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So That's Panda's great. saying that it's definitely uh, it's his control and his focus is the main reason why he thinks Kyle's done better this year. So that, that's good to see. Like, uh, we, we wish Kyle well, and uh, we always know he had it together, but he is a bit of a nuclear louche at times. So Yeah. We also had our, our development game, which is really interesting, was a tight affair. Which Yes, it was a tight affair. Yes, I didn't touch on that. There's no there's no ties on baseball, I think, is exactly what all of us Ted said to Paul on both sides, but it, it had run long. I think there was a lot of walks in the game. Uh, every 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 half inning was three runs, and then we, we, we changed. And in a lot of it, I think, was just walks, walks, walks. I think Galaxy posted that they had only done one hit. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many hits we had, but I do remember we have a shortstop on our development team called Caleb. He is a young 17-year-old American. Uh, he's here with his family who are part of the church. And then he is just, I think, a really good player. And we hope he would stay longer in Edinburgh because, I mean, he would be one of those kids that would develop to, I think, play shortstop for, for the Devils for many years. He's really good. He made solid contact. And then their shortstop was also on fire, which was, I, I think, a shout, shout out for him. But he, he played really well. I, I, I don't really know his name, but he, he, he was really good. Uh, I, it was, I, again, very unfortunate that the development league is not something that, you know, could be competitive and in a way that, like all the guys know that when they get into that game, they need to win it. And we and the Devils have kind of like a, a great team spirit. And I think that's one of the reasons that we're really good or this year, and it's the fact that the, the guys that are playing the, the A game, you know, they, they stay for the triple A game and they're rooting for us and they're, they're, they're doing the handshake. They're, they're, they're all in the game. And, and I think we're rooting for them as well when they're playing. And I, I would wish nothing more that Paul would be watching this and actually make the first and second game, the, the first and second place of the development league, just play a full game. Just let the kids go and, and play a final. Yeah, I think that's probably something I talk about um, 
for next season is there. I think it was all right. We're gonna try to do this because the numbers have grown so much over the years now that you actually it was a great idea to have a developmental league and let guys get playing time that normally wouldn't get as much now. And I think it's been so successful that you go okay well maybe what we do is they start playing full games now and that'd be amazing to see that so um we've got andy vaughn saying it was gordon uh mcgarren oh, i'm gonna screw it up badly I, I apologize gordon there uh it was the comments <laughs> shortstop and he also said that they uh you guys fielded really well and they could seem to just hit the ball you guys um while you guys were, were in the field so um yeah. nothing worse than hitting the ball hard right at people yeah, and also I, I I just feel like those games are really something where you can see a couple guys really kind of get better. We have a a a, a, a guy that's playing second base, uh, who's Andrew Wilson. He's really good. Devin is starting to pitch. He if, if he puts it in the strike zone and 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 if he becomes more of a consistent hitter, he he's somebody that in the next year I would say would be playing playing triple a they're really good kids in our team that are i think developing to 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 be part of the scottish league in a in a in a bigger way yep all right that's paul already saying that. that's a plan for next year the development is truly more from the single a lead much sooner than we all expected so hey there we go we know paul's watching and uh that's exactly the plan there so you know uh, that's, well, that's yeah, awesome I, news I, I just feel that this year you know you've already created the league you already have two really competitive teams in on in Glasgow in 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 the Devils. Why not let the the A guys have a final and you know get whatever they're you know the first place with a with a nice long game. Why not? Yeah, we see. I said that's something they could probably put together there. I think we've got three more weeks of baseball, and then we start to kick off the tournament there. So that might be something they could easily put together for this. It'd be really interesting to see if we do. Um, you know, if they do have the final, I definitely try to make sure I go down there and watch it, and uh, wherever it might be, if it's in Edinburgh, Glasgow, and like that there. But um, you know, you can see those guys get a full game could be really interesting. Um, or even to do say a round robin tournament where you do an Edinburgh team and a Glasgow team. Um, an Aberdeen and obviously Tayport team. That could be a fun one as well. Yeah, because I think that the Tayport team was also really competitive when they came played the Devils. They, I think we we beat them seven six, but it could have easily been something that they would have won. Uh, it it's such an interesting kind of approach that development league, and and I think it's something that if fostered correctly could be something that 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 is much bigger. I just think the competitive side of it. I've, I've seen a couple of our guys just be like, this isn't competitive. We're taking four balls and then walking to first. But but then again, something really nice and something that could that could grow into something bigger. That's great. But so my co-host is, is on watching the show live. He's not joining us, but he's definitely joining us live. So hi, John. Thanks for joining us. And you couldn't make it tonight. So well, let's, let's wrap up the, the, the schedule for last weekend. But again, we have you on as a guest. I want to hear about you. So you've got a quite an interesting story. You're, you're from Colombia. You've been in Texas. We talked about Miami a little bit. Tell me a little about yourself and how you end up here in Scotland. That's interesting. Uh, the short answer to that question is a girl. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I, I was born in Colombia. Uh, and I think my, my baseball story just really starts with my dad. My dad's a avid baseball player and he played softball and it kind of he's 82 now by the way he might he might be listening so shout out to my dad uh he is he played softball until like, i think he was probably 65 he just was, he just loved baseball and then we moved to the states when i'm five years old because my mom was doing a phd and she moved, we moved to Denton, Texas, most random place in the world. Uh, not in the 90s, not a place where I think there were many Colombians. It was a North Texas University. So that was um, something really random to be kind of in that situation. I think my parents were, you know, Colombian coming from public universities and not really, like, not, not really finding a place. I, re I remember my babysitter was two Chinese students that were right next door because it was me and my cousin who were eight, eight years old and I was five when we moved. And we just, we, we just lived in the most, like we lived probably three minute walk from the university. But my parents were like, I think my mom was in her, in her, her late forties. 
right? So it was, it was just like a random, random family living in this university town. I remember the other, it was, it was the African-American that lived right next to it. He was also a babysitter for us. It was just the most random situation. But my dad looked for Little League Baseball. And he obviously just, I think at that point when I come into the Little League, I'm already more advanced than the other kids because my dad had me since I was two years old just throwing a ball at me and getting that hand-eye coordination going. Um, I think that's the beginning of baseball more in a competitive way. There's little leagues in the States. It's just so amazing to bring up ball players. I think even in the 90s, they were thinking about this little league World series and they were thinking more. I remember when I'm seven or eight years old, when I'm still there, I, I played in the Denton uh, All-Star Series. And it's just, they got people from like these eight year old boys just playing with other towns. So the Denton All-Stars were playing, you know, I don't know, the Waco, it, it just, it came from all around Texas. It was, it was a really cool kind of, they're just brewing ball players. Right. It, it's this it's this thing that's really sad to see in, in, in like countries where, where there's not really that affinity with baseball like Scotland, where you don't really have the opportunity to have these kind of baseball leagues and, and see people that really love the sport, be able to grow it or, or be able to have these kids grow into ball players because there's just not the infrastructure around it and the competitiveness so, so they can grow into that. So then that becomes kind of like my first. Uh, stage of baseball. My mom finishes her PhD in, in, in her kind of um, fellowship that she had after that. And then we moved back to Columbia. And then when I get back there, I think I'm nine, nine, 10 years old. And I, I get back to like baseball in Columbia, which is completely disorganized. And there's no, there's nothing like that. I remember going back and, and just there's a, there's a pop-up and I'm calling for the ball. And then one of the coaches just grabs me and says like, no, you can't play with the kids. You got to play with some, you already know the rules. So then I, I, I was put in to play with the 14, 13 year olds and I hated it. They just bullied me and I was so small. Also, I'm a really small human being for those who have seen me, not the biggest guy. And I, I could, I could just never be, I could never really hit the ball hard. Right now, although I was second in the home run derby that we did in Edinburgh, by no means is it, it's more the bat than it is me. It's, it's just not something I have, no, no power. And then I started playing uh, state in Columbia. So Columbia's baseball is more regional. Right. So then for little leagues, uh, especially like we call it infantil, pre, prejuvenil. So it's like pre-junior, junior. Uh, juvenile, which is a different word in English, but anyway, right, of course, we, yeah. we we played uh, kind of different leagues in the state level. So then we we worked on kind of in our little league in in Medellin, just trying to look for for a way to be in the, in the state team. And then I played in the state team for uh, I think what was that? Uh, probably until I was eighteen. But then when I, when I became bigger, I was just, it, what, so when I hit 18 years old, I'm just not big enough. The other kids are just much, like when I started playing with, with the big guys, I was just, I, I wasn't big enough. I never developed muscles, never, never did that thing. So ne- never really got that big. I, I got better and better. I would go back to the States and visit family because I have family in, in the Houston area. And, uh, and I would always play summer ball, always wanted to get into a college, really, really kind of gave that a big try one of the years, but it was just, just, just didn't have the size, Jason. So when I was curious about baseball in Columbia here, before we move on to where you're going. Absolutely. Back. So uh, you obviously say it's organized at a state level. So is it so like we grew up with playing baseball through high school? And, and it was like you had your high school ball and then you had your travel ball in the summer there. Is it something yeah. similar along the lines there? No, no. High schools, high school teams had, uh, you know, football, soccer um, teams. Baseball was more kind of, there was, so for example, in Medellin, and this is different because guys from Venezuela, 
uh, they would definitely have more ball in Venezuela than, Absolutely. Than, than, than they did in Colombia. In Colombia, in the coast, the high schools were organized, right? And then the league was organized by teams that weren't high school teams, but they, they would pull in uh, kids from high school. But in Medellin, Medellin is a, is a football town. Um, and it, it by no means did it ever have kind of high school teams. What it did have was kind of our, our little league, kind of three, three, four teams. And then they would pull the best four or five players from there. And then from the coach in, in our state, there's a little bit of a coach town and they would like pull in, I think 10, 12 kids from there. And then we would go and play the nationals every year. And that, that, that was kind of, Los Nacionales was was the thing that we would play for as kids. So, cool. so is baseball very big in there? We obviously know about football being huge there, but then again, yeah. you talk about say you know Venezuela is a big baseball playing place. You're not far from Venezuela at all. So you know, I, I, and you're seeing more and more Colombian baseball players being produced now. So you you do see the Australas of the world, right? Um, I no, I think I think I think Colombia will never be will never be what Venezuela is in baseball. And I think in the coast, there is a lot of, of people that play baseball, but it just never gets as organized as it, as it was in Venezuela. Venezuela has baseball parks all around, all around the country. And if you, if you meet some of the guys, we, we have a, 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 a Latino baseball chat. That's, that's how we call, we call it baseball Latinos. And, and all the guys, most of them are, there's two Dominican and all of them are Venezuelan. The rest are Venezuelan, one Colombian. And, and I mean, the amount of baseball that these guys know more than like, for example, me growing up in Colombia, these like Leo, Juan, they, these guys, baseball guys, just their mind works baseball watch. Like they correct my swing every opportunity they have. It, it just, the way, and, and I think the weight that they had training and having a, better and much better training than what I had in Colombia at least and their their mind just works in a, in a very different way and they're they're really good ball players and I think the reason that the Devils are really good are because we have one in Leo on the team yeah yeah I've got like I said Panda's chimed in there said in Venezuela they started playing at four so yeah. uh, obviously that Panda we're definitely going to have you on the show one of these times there we haven't forgotten about you so uh, we, we were just uh, scrambling when well, we were scrambling tonight but uh, we we, had, we were trying to find out who was going to win or not but um, yeah no it's always interesting to hear the same thing I mean I started playing baseball when I was five or softball is the same yeah. idea there so it's always interesting to hear how other people get started and, and and things are there and obviously you know everyone knows Columbia for your football so this is one of those things you don't hear about here it's the same thing as like baseball in scotland as we talked about before everyone goes there's baseball in scotland how unusual yeah. <laughs> it, it like for me for example so i i i go well i finished kind of my business career in in, in Colombia, and then at one point in my life i was like i i need to i need to go back. well especially my the pressure from my parents were like a master's and a PhD and just talking to me about like, you need to go, you need to go do more. You need to do more. You need to like focus on your studies. I'm like, I'm 30 years old. I, I work in a company. I, I'm like selling things and just, I have a, I have a day job. What, what, what are we doing? Uh, and they, they were like, just talk all the time about doing something different in academia. And I went and I, I went to the university of Oregon, which I know annoys you, Jason, a lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I went and I, I do a, a master's in nonprofit management there. Which did did you go to o, to OSU? I did. Yeah, I went. I went there. Uh, so I was I was going to walk on the baseball team, and I talked to the coach, and he talked me out of trying to do it because I was just going to be a batting practice pitcher until I got big and strong enough to actually maybe make the team. There. Why, why, why not Eugene? There, there, there wasn't a baseball team then. There wasn't or, a baseball team. They had a club team there. And, and if, if, be honest, if they had a baseball team there, I probably would have ended up going to the Ducks. Nice. But there was no baseball team there. So, so when I went from 94 to 99, there was no baseball in there. So I think it was, the baseball team finally happened about early 2000s. So, you know, nice. was, I, th I think you can make the team now, though. Because they're still that bad. <laughs> Pac-12, they were they were last or or close to last. I remember going to baseball games in, in Eugene, and it, it, I I don't remember ever leaving there thinking we won. 
Uh, see, I, I didn't. It took me about three years to start going to games again because it was it was painful to go and watch games and go. I could be on that field and I could be definitely hanging with those guys there. Um, but yeah, I, I just didn't. I didn't have the the drive to go and and be owned sixteen hours a day and then be a batting practice pitcher and, and you know. I'm not going to complain. I ended up here and having a great time doing it. But yeah, that, it, it basically goes, yeah, you're going to be a bad pitcher, pitcher for two years and you might make the team by your junior year. So <laughs> kind of glad he talked me out of it because he was at least realistic about what my my chances were. But yeah, it was it was very painful to go watch any kind of games there. Yeah. I, Eugene has a has a has an A ball team. And I think it was it was part of the Chicago Cubs. They're called the Eugene Emeralds. So whenever the university is not playing, they're, they're playing. And and one of those, I met a Colombian guy who was in the roster and I was just kind of looking at things and he was like, oh, from Cartagena. And he he was a relief pitcher. And I, I just kind of approached him and we, we became friends and had a beer. And the, the A-ball life, man, it's, I think you, you're you making like 25, 35 for a season, but you're having like, it's, I mean, it's not really great life, I would say. If you never get out of the A ball, it's it's great that you get to play baseball all the time. I yep. I, I guess, but it's a hard life. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's the life that I would want. And then after that, what do you do for for a living? What do you yeah. do at your 30, 31, 32 for a living? <laughs> So, so we, we have a good friend of the show who was a minor league pitcher for quite some time. I think he did for like four years and did it independently there. And he says, you know what, but you're so driven to make it. And then yeah. at some point in time, you're going to go and do it in there. Um, um, but yeah, like I said, he said, you know, it is long bus journeys. It's, you know, you know, four, roo- four roommates in you know, one room kind of thing there. And, you know, exactly. and, and he goes, he said, the hardest part was the psychological part for him because it was, I'm having a bad day. I'm going to be cut. And because there's obviously guys who they've invested millions into, and I'm the guy they signed for fifteen thousand dollars, and I'm making seven hundred dollars a month, <laughs> and and that was that was the hardest bit because you had one bad game, you're like, all right, I I've got to break out of the slump because if I don't, they'll replace me for someone else for the same amount of money. And you're thinking every day, what am I doing after this? This pretty is, much, yeah. <laughs> this is what I've been doing for the last fifteen years, and I've put everything into my body to get to where I am right now. I, I think I, I, I mean, probably the guys in, in the team will laugh a lot about this, but I could have had an A ball. I think at one point my whole life just playing A ball and that would have been fun, but also kind of grateful I, I didn't go that way or I didn't try it harder. It's a tough one. So again, I played with a guy in high school who ended up playing for the Angels in A ball and I think he was cut after the first year and he ended up going and playing in Austria for four years because he got probably more money in Austria than he would as a single A ball player or rookie yeah. ball, rookie level ball player and had a blast doing it and uh, ended up meeting his wife up there and came back. And I, I, you know what, I, I need to go and reach out to him and see if I can get him on the show here. But uh, it, it was interesting to see that he goes, you know what, like um, I did it, I got signed and, you know, I, I wanted to pursue that. But, you know, when you're 23 years old and you know you're a rookie ball player you've got a long road ahead of you and you know all of a sudden you you see the best of the best and um yeah he said it was a it was a real interesting eye-opener for him so um because yeah i saw him at the 10-year class reunion and uh yeah he was giving me a hard time for playing baseball in scotland when he knows how high the level was over here (laughs) do do you think that there will be a time in Scotland where we're going to be able to have more or at least less professional or less amateur league. And there will be, you know, two, 2030 people getting paid for paying, playing on the devils and then having like a real league in a way that's more, it's more professional. Do you think, think that, that that's a path? This is a conversation we'll have off the air about fundraising <laughs> but yes right. I, I think as absolutely going to think i think what what i what i'm alluding to is i came up with a, a five-year plan and, and what we would possibly do should we hit the numbers we want to do we could get enough money that each city could have their field done um a paid coach that could play or not and and, and then um you know like batting cages and everything else up there and i think that's definitely something that is entirely possible here and i think that would be probably would be the, the difference maker to have someone that's paid to be here and coach five or six days a week 
um, and really just kind of develop the people there because we're, we're at such a loss for time. Like I said, like I said you, you start playing at five, your dad throwing you balls to you. You know, people are picking the sport up at 16, 17, 18. And if, you know, the hand-eye coordination is there if you played cricket, but you don't have any other sports that's comparable to that that can pick it up as quickly because that's what I find. Everyone always said to me is hitting is the hardest because I'm not used to actually, you know, using my arms to swing. I'm used to kicking everything or like that. So yeah. I think that would make the difference if you had someone there that was had the keys to the batting cage and you go, all right, great. Uh, this coach is available from four o'clock to nine o'clock Monday through Friday and you can go to the cages and he'll work with you for to your hands bleed. I think a lot of guys would go down there and take batting practice all day long or same thing with pitching. You could all of a sudden have someone that could pitch and be able to pass on that information. I mean, that's the hardest part. Again, it's nice for you guys to have all the Latin guys that can pick that stuff up like your swing here and there, but there's no one that can do that for everybody. You know, yeah. it, it, that's always going to be the hardest bit. It's just not have someone that's paid to be there to put this stuff out. Um, we had this amazing coach, coach Jeff, who came here, and and he taught me more in two weeks than I ever learned in like four years of high school baseball. Um, and funny enough, I actually have the printout. I found it and I'll pass it along to everyone there and just the mental aspect there. And what he was able to do in four practices over two weeks improved everyone's games immensely. And it was just such a big deal there. But again, people kind of, you know, forget how to do that or, you know, the season ends and you forget, OK, getting those bad habits again. Um, but just, you know, having someone that could do that, that would coach guys, I think that would make it a very competitive league and definitely could challenge um, for people down south there. I know uh, the London Mets pay somebody. I think he's getting paid 4,000 pounds to play for him this year. So, you know, so yeah, oh, I mean, they, have the, they have the money for that. So, yeah, but it's the same idea. You, you know, if you had a coach, you go, OK, we'll give you a thousand pounds a month and, and room and board. That's pretty good. You know, and yeah. you, you could do a summer out of that or two and, and you know, people would enjoy it. Um, and, you know, you would get more from that six months of having someone there day in, day out to help you with that. And, you know, you could actually put all the time and effort. I mean, you know, everyone talks about the 10,000 hour swing. Well, we, you know, we don't have 10,000 hours yeah. to get good at it. So, you know, you've got to really just maximize what you have. Um, and I, I think that would make a huge difference for a lot of people. And I think we, we live in such a globalized society nowadays. So many, so many people that have traveled from so many places in the world that are here and are having kids here, right? Like I have a six month old, which, you know, he, he's not going to be able to play baseball in Scotland it, for like all the love in the world that I have for the game. Uh, unfortunately, I know that he will never be a baseball player in Scotland unless we develop something where there is a way for these kids to be able to, to, to grow into it. I, I know our coach Juan has a, has a small guy that's like could be right now starting into the game and probably will never be able to get into the game because, you know, football, they have academy, they have good coaches, they have all these things. But I think there is room to grow what, what, what we have here. And it would be so beautiful to just be able to be a part of that in, in the way that, that at one point we could actually grow our league because I, I'm going to tell you something. For me, it's it's my way out of my regular life. Mm -hmm. This it's it's the only thing I do. My my wife gets you know drinks with friends once a week and, and maybe something else. I get two things. I get one training session and on Sunday, it's <laughs> exactly. and that's my life. I, yep. I absolutely love doing that. And it's the only that like even 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 the guys will, will ask me like, oh, can you go have a drink? And I'm like, no. No, because if I have a drink, then I can't train on, on, on one of the days or, or I have to sacrifice the Sunday. So for me, having this league is as important as any kind of mental health aspect for me, which is it, it's just so big. It's so important. What you guys have created makes somebody like me happy to be here and happy to be in the part of Scotland. I know, for example, for Peter, for Kit, for all these Canon guys that moved into Edinburgh and that are now kind of seeing the league and being able to be part of that it just it, it just fuels their life and what they're doing you know either a phd or a life here uh you you see guys like steve who were here who was part of the canons part of the edinburgh devils kind of went one way and then went the other way with guy we love he played for the scottish scotland team as well uh i think it's the only game that we won uh in down in saw was the game that he pitched but anyway he, he was, he, 
I know right now he's in New York thinking, oh, man, every Sunday, I wish I could be playing. I, I wish I could be doing this. So what you guys have created is really created a, a group of people that, that find happiness and, and love from doing it. Like what we heard from Steve when he was in this podcast, Steve loves the game, loves being able to be part of the game and now has this kind of entirely like core group of guys that, that are playing baseball in Edinburgh and he's a part of it. it. It's just so important. So it fuels a lot of our lives, I think. Absolutely. I mean, it was the same for me. I came knowing nobody found out it was a baseball team. And all of a sudden there was 15 guys to get immediately relate to and all wanted yeah. to hang out and talk baseball. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's that was one thing I really enjoyed. It was the community that we all had from it. And, and the community is amazing because it's just you're getting everyone from around the world. You know, you have Xing Yan, who's not with us for anymore. He's from Taiwan. Um, you know, you, you know, Colombia, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, you know, Canada, America, South South Africa. You know, <laughs> we can yeah. so you know, uh, you know, someone's from France, and you know, and you get these, uh, you know, with Hungarian guys. Uh, um, gosh, we we've been all Lithuanian. Polish. Polish, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we've pretty much covered everywhere in Europe for someone who's played there. Um, you know, obviously the Korean guys, the Japanese guys. So it's always fun to see how everyone's learn the game and brought their bit of baseball and they're part of the, their world to Scotland. Yeah. And, and why not make it bigger, right? Why not give the kids of those people that live here the opportunity to, to be baseball players as well? And I mean, again, it's, it's really important that we keep growing the league and it's really important that we make it competitive because I think this year is, is, is a year that we all feel that there's, there's more competitive aspect to the league. The, the creating both leagues makes it that, that, you know, we can play a kind of higher level of ball. I, I, I really believe that. And, and I think the idea of kind of going out and winning, we, we saw Rory at the beginning of the year just saying, you know, the cannons are stacked. And, and I was the first one that said the cannons are stacked. Peter, Peter Rowe, who is just, he, he's probably, in my eyes, one of the best arms not to say that Kyle's not the best arm. Kyle's the best arm, but he's <laughs> he's the second best arm in the league, and he he's 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 an incredible incredible guy. And and we thought the cannons were really really stacked. And and again, it's been such a competitive league this year that it's just it's it's been it's been great to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. So we got we got Greg Greg Wells in chime in. He says he agrees with us that baseball has helped him. Uh, especially with COVID, and so it's a break of reality, and, that, and that's exactly what it is. You're, you use nine to five, and then you know it's it's six o'clock on Wednesday, and you're like, all right, throwing the ball around again, and yeah. and and you know, it's a real shame that you guys don't get to travel as much as we did previously. We used to go to Liverpool and Hull, and oh my gosh, they were absolute nightmares. You know, you, you get up and meet at six o'clock in the morning, drive five hours, play a doubleheader, and then drive back there. Oh wow. So, uh, but you know, I mean, I look, I look back at those fondly because it, it was, you know, good time with bonding with people. So, you know, all the friends I made are still my best friends I've ever made here in Scotland. And, uh, you know, we all have our stories of, of these nightmare road trips that we used to do. But, you know, again, we have a lot of people from not from, you know, in the UK and they go, you know, I never would have saw Liverpool or Manchester or Hull or uh, Menwith Hill Air Force Base was always everyone's favorite place to go because it's an American Air Force Base and you could get grape soda and Mountain Dew and cheesesteaks. <laughs> nice. we, we, we would literally clear them out of other grape soda for three months. <laughs> so, you know, they, we actually had to go phone ahead to say that we were coming down so they knew to stock up for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So, that, I mean, again, I think my story just goes back to never really like always loving competitive sports, always loving to be competitive in, in all the things, you know, sports that I used to do, but coming here and finding this league and, and kind of like the first day that I came, I remember it was in lockdown. And then this guy, Matt was talking in the, in the, in the, in the chat. And he, he was like, why don't you come along? We'll throw the ball. We just started throwing the ball. And I, I think it was in the meadows. And we just, and he was like, yeah, I played for the Devils. And, and I think you should probably want to play for the Devils. And just, <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, why not? And then we played a couple of competitive games when we played for, for a cup. And I think last year we played like four games. We beat the Cannons every time, which it's just becoming a, you know, 
a routine thing for us to do. I, I love this chat. We've got the beaver and duck chat, and we've got the Candace devil chat. <laughs> We're just gonna be natural rivals. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I mean, I, I think I've played probably six, seven games against the Cannons, and every single time I've had. No, I think we, we, we lost one. And I think it's the only one that Ren has played. Right. Which okay. I'm I'm not gonna say run with the difference, but that that game we, we we definitely lost, and I think it was just a a kind of scrimmage game that we did. But again, really, really, really happy that that you know Rory can always you know have that. Uh, yeah, we've <laughs> lost to you a couple times this year, and and I think we were talking we we face we face the cannons again at the end of the season, so. And so we we can give them that second place or take it away from them, which <laughs> we're really happy that we have that chance. Right. So we, we should be uh, uh, talking to you before the game on which side we should lay our money down on so we can see to that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that one day we'll be in Bet365, hopefully. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's good. Like I said, it's, it's really nice to see that it's got a very competitive league there. And I think it gives everyone... Uh, who is starting out something to aspire to. And I think yeah. that's where you kind of go and go, okay, these guys have been playing ball for 10, 15 years, and you can see the difference there. And you go, all right, if I'm going to reach that level, I think they can go, okay, great. I'm going to have to put the hours in to get that way. Um, and, and if I really want to go and play in that. And of course, there's always the opportunities with travel. Not everyone can make it. And you, yeah. all of a sudden you're you know inserted that spot. And all you can do is you hope you're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it was it was funny that when we went to Aberdeen, I, I told you last week, we the Devils traveled with nineteen people, which which is I think unheard of. Like what what the Cannons I think traveled with nine nine people. Nine people last weekend, yeah. Nine nine people last week, and, and by the way, I think a shout out to a, a kid named Dylan. He broke his hand, played the whole game with his hand broken. Oh no, I didn't realize Dylan had broke his hand. Yeah, Dylan, I, I think broke his hand. I, I, he broke something. It, it was uh, not in the post game report I got. So <laughs> we, we we learned of that. And so big, big shout out for him to, for playing the whole game with, with a broken hand. Wow. Probably yeah. the reason, well, we say it's the reason that Steve <laughs> struck out 14 people. I think when you're striking out 14 people, I think you're just on a roll that day. So you just have to go with that there. So he, no, he, he also had that knuckle. I think. When he played us, when when they came down, they were also not complete that that game. But um, he, I think, struck out almost all of us in the lineup. But uh, El Comandante Juan, he was the only one that didn't strike out and took a walk. But the rest of us took a strikeout in the first three innings. We were losing for nothing. We we thought that game was going to be tight, and then something happened to Steve. I think he wasn't entirely there. And then we opened it up. But again, I think we've opened it up in every game that we've been in. So I'm curious, so you tell all your friends and family back home that you're playing in baseball in Scotland. What, what do they think about that? Uh, I what think, was their first reaction? Like, oh my gosh, there's baseball in Scotland? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the first one. Uh, I think one of, one of my very, very good friends uh, who was uh, one of the groomsmen in the wedding, the first thing he asked was, uh, I, I send him what I was hitting. So I, I send him like statistics that Paul sent us and, and I send him what I was hitting. And he was like, can you send me what the rest of the team is hitting? So then I actually know if you're actually doing good or not. All right. And then I send him the rest of the team. I was like, ah, you're, you're just on par or even under what the other guys are doing. <laughs> so then, yeah, I think it's disbelief, but also I think there's a certain, I think, People more like in my life who are baseball players also thinking, fuck, I'm, I'm in my 30s. I can't play because I'm not competitive in the league. Mm -hmm. While we, we say 40 and, and all these things and still say, yeah, we're, we're playing amateur baseball. And I think there's a little bit of like, I don't get that. I don't have that. Yeah. But you get that. And, and I think it's, it's something that everybody that's in this league should also just feel incredibly happy that we have, you know, baseball in Scotland. But yeah, the reaction is immediately like, well, what? Do you yeah. hit it with a backpipe? Is that what you do? <laughs> yes. And they're like, let's well, send pictures. I want to see what kind of place you're playing on. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a beauty. Well, those, those paintings were, 
you know, they, they, they really frame the parts to be much beautiful, much more beautiful than, than I think they are. <laughs> the, the, the tape board, the, those guys in tape board have done such a good job just creating something. They have a backstop. Like, I mean, this, this weekend we were, we were filling up the, the, the kind of holes in the outfield with some dirt that, that one of the guys in the team, Leo went and bought. Right. Like, while these guys like have a proper infield and are doing everything, which I mean, I love what we're doing as a club, but I think we, we could at one point just, you know, do a much better job in Edinburgh on, on just having, having our own part, right. And having something that's more established in a mound. Yeah. Mound, mound would be key. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we're probably in the right place now that we can get a push and, and try to really kind of uh, um, see if we can get that permanent back stuff that I think is, there's been multiple hurdles to get where we are now. So the fact oh, yeah. we have a, a place to play in the city centers is, is, is pretty impressive. So, yeah. So, and it's, and, a, it's, and, and, it's, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's a great, great view as well of the city. I, I don't know if anybody that is like stand in the outfield and just looked at the city really kind of has to feel that kind of, I mean, we're, we're really playing in the middle of the town, which is really nice. Yeah, so, so this, Paul's just saying a shout out to Edinburgh Leisure and all the things they do for us. So, <laughs> so if you don't know about Edinburgh Leisure, that's obviously like laced with a lot of irony. And uh, uh, at least I saw the grass had been cut and it's no longer a foot long and you need a machete to go get your way to first base. So uh, unfortunately, I, I think they are trying to sell everything off there. Um, and maybe that will be to our advantage where we can take advantage of that and actually put the way we want and they can maybe boot the football people somewhere else to play football because there are tons of places to play football in the city. It'd be nice to have a permanent home to play baseball. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you, do you know what the, what the games next week are? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I will look real quick. That's good. Cause I think the devils, we play, we play. The is it the I always I always galaxy or comments just kind of blur together in my mind. I knew we wanted to beat the comment, so yeah, we're playing the galaxy. Right, um, pull up the website here. Uh, and Panda's asking what's going to happen to Lily next year. I know Ritz still in charge. I don't know if he's still going to uh, uh, do it next there's, year. There's there's a good amount of kids that are out there which always makes me feel really happy on, on Sundays that maybe at one point little Tiago here can, can, can get out there in the next three or four years and, and, and go and hit a ball. So I'm not seeing this schedule here, but I said Andy Vaughn saying the Oilers are at the Comets, so that sorts that one out there. Um, I'm just trying to see. as uh, I know we're having problems with the website. Um, and there's not much we can do about that, but I'm sure someone will share, you know, just shout out what's going on there. Uh, I think I have it as well over here. But yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, we, we, I think there's enough older players who have played back in the day that we could actually put a proper um, junior club together with us all. I know I've got my girls that are, uh, uh, I, I tried it a few times to get them out there, but they haven't really taken to baseball yet, but you never know. Uh, there's still time. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that for me will be really, really sad if this guy just kind of doesn't like playing baseball. You know, you're so invested in the game. You're so invested in the Texas Ranger. I'm a huge Texas Ranger fan and just so invested in the sport. Like, if he goes and, like, I don't know, can I take him to Texas? Maybe not. I'll, I'll maybe take him to a Mets game, and then he'll fall in love with the Mets. What do I do then? So I, I would talk to one of your softball teammates who may or may not had a son to get drafted by the San Diego Padres, and, and – I would right. talk to him about his athletic skills because little Gabriel was, uh, uh, didn't play much baseball this way, but I believe he was a Scottish Taekwondo champion and swimming oh, wow. champion. So, uh, so little Gabriel was pretty athletic anyways. So, um, it does help when your dad did play minor league baseball for the Mariners for years. So, uh, you can definitely do all that along the way. Well, so. I think we're, we're blessed to have him in the team. Cause I, I don't know if you've seen big Gabriel, but he is a uh, he is a specimen of a human being. Yes, he is. Yes, we he, used to he used to play for the for the for the cannons for many years. So yes, I used to have him and uh, uh, yeah. He he's also a, a, an amazingly great human being and raised raised a, a, a great guy and his son. But 
he is a, he is a he is a force to be reckoned with. Is what I would say. Cool. All right. All right. So all right. So Paul's given us a schedule this weekend. It's Galaxy nice. at Devils, Cannons at Breakers, and Oilers at Comets. So that's the weekend schedule there. But yes, yeah. Big Gary Biel is amazing. That we uh, he used to be my uh, my left fielder, and then they'll probably talk about uh, Julian Santos, which was my 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 center fielder. And uh, yeah, th- those two basically led the Cannons to uh, three league titles in a row because anything hit in the outfield was caught by those guys. <laughs> I, I we. I think we're playing on, they're playing on Thursday. I'm over here in, in Wales right now, but they're playing on Thursday for the cup. So I think they're playing the demons. It's the Dodgers are playing the demons and then right. the souls are playing somebody else, but we really want to go and uh, play the soul at, at the end. Uh, we, we would love to have that little rematch in, in, in softball and people that are follow softball will know why there's a little bit of a, you know, competitiveness going on which is <laughs> it, it would be lovely to to go against them again yeah i can imagine there so yes so uh, uh panda saying that the police of julian santos and the shortstop was our was gilberto yes gilberto was our shortstop so so we were really solid for a few years there and, and one year we had a guy mike smith who uh pitched for St. John's for uh, or played oh, ball at St. John's there, and so he would literally, I think, party at five o'clock in the morning, get three hours of sleep, and roll out and, and pitch a shutout. <laughs> so you know, we go back there. Uh, so, so how are you finding softball here? So it's not, not something we normally talk about, but yeah, I said you know, there's obviously a very competitive softball league. There, there's a there's a bigger softball. League. I think it includes as well having it like kind of mix, like having women kind of come into the league and and really broaden the experience because i think you know it's it's a very mix and match kind of and and then you get really good teams you get teams that are not that good and then you it it's quite interesting i think again just being able to get out of your normal schedule i don't do it much again as i said you know try to help as much as i can here in the house and so i can't really get out more and i really love my baseball i also have El Comandante telling me that I, my swing will get bad with, with softball. Yeah, so that's what I always tell everyone else. Hey, you're going to screw your swing up. <laughs> you're going to screw your swing. So I, I try to stay away unless it's like the really competitive games and wait for the little guy to get a little bit bigger and then go and join the Dodgers, you know, in the next couple, two years. And, and also softball, I think, is something that I will say maybe I can do for a longer time than what I'll be able to do baseball. Uh, so hopefully I get a couple of years after, after my baseball career ends. Fair enough. Like I said, you know, it, it's, it's just nice to go out there and, and try to find that outlet when you go, you know what, I can't do a whole Sunday anymore and I got to find something else to do and, and softball fits a lot of people's schedule there. So I totally understand. Yeah. We had a lot of guys that played baseball for years and obviously graduate uh, into softball and I'm sure you've run into them during the league. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, would you ever go and play softball? At baseball? God, no, I will never play softball. In life. <laughs> okay. I, it's, uh, it ruins my swing. And again, um, um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a lefty line drive hitter and it is not conducive to that. So um, uh, I'm sure someone will drag me out for a game at one point in time, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I despise softball. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a different sport for sure. Yeah. But- so I, I, I fill up my, uh, uh, my, my free time was playing uh, pickup basketball and that, that's where I'm feeling my competitive void. Oh, nice. Where do you play? So I play with a bunch of old Greek guys uh, at one of the high schools. So, <laughs> so it's it's one of those things, as you know, as a parent, your, your free time's limited. So we play on a Wednesday night at nine o'clock and, uh, and that, that gets my competitive spirit on there. So uh, um, yeah, nice. so I, 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 if I chose, it's like, all right, I miss basketball because that, that took me, oh gosh, uh, 15 years to figure out where I could play some sort of competitive basketball. So Nice. I, I would, yeah, I would be lost to find, to find even a pickup game here. Yeah, it's 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 tough. We'll, we'll talk about this off the air, and yeah. uh, um, and, and yes, if you want to join sometime, you can because that was we used to do uh, uh, bowling. That was our off season workout. Was the, the bowling season just started up, and every two weeks you do bowling, and that would keep your arm in shape till the next spring. Is it, is it the Scottish bowling? The way no, you no, pro- proper bowling. Beer and, and go to a park and, and no, 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 it's, it's it's proper. Like go to lanes. It's competitive, and, and okay. there's leagues and all that there. So yeah, uh, we wow, started doing that. You really transitioned from baseball to kind of just 
being Scottish. <laughs> uh, we, we was trying to figure out something because we did golf for a lot of years. So, uh, you know, it was like, okay, well, um, and I'm hoping that we bring back the uh, the end of the year a Scottish golf tournament where we have everyone go out and go golfing. And, and, and no matter how bad or good you are, you still go out there and we, we play 18 holes at Silver Nows Golf Course and really kind of hack the course up, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> It sounds fun. I, I think the most important thing that I I kind of feel that I want to kind of say in this podcast, just because I have the spotlight, is to kind of thank everybody that's part of the league, everybody that's part of the Devils, especially, because we have a big development team, and they sometimes have to sit down and watch seven innings of baseball, and they do it every single Sunday, and they are great kids that will have the opportunity to play in the future but they make our team so much richer and so much better. So I, I, I mean, big shout out to them and big shout out to, you know, everybody that's kind of part of the league, what Rory does, what, what, what they all do to keep the league together. Because again, I think for a lot of the guys, it just, it, it allows that escape. It allows that being able to go and hit a ball and, and, and feel competitive and have a team and do all the things that we're doing. And, and I think it's going to be it's going to be hard to take it away from the Devils this year. All right. Well, this is a good place to end it. So you're going to go you, you predict that Devils win this year. You're going to take the league. I, I think if if there were odds for them, uh, I would say the odds would make us, I think, favorites right now. I think so. I think you got like I think it's a three game lead or two game lead there with like, three games to go. So I, I think things are looking your way there. And of course, you have the Caledonia Cup at the end of the year. Uh, it gives you guys at least a week break off. So uh, and then yeah. you get to face it that way. So uh, I want to wish you the best of luck. And, and Thank thanks you. so much for coming on the show. Thank uh, you. Do you want to say anything else before we go? Uh, no, th- uh, big thanks to Paul. Big thanks to 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 the Devils eight triple A team. Great job, guys. And I mean, I wouldn't say that every single time we have a speech, we're going to win this thing. Brilliant. All right, Ivan, thanks so much for coming on the show. Evan, we'll be back next week, 9 o'clock on Tuesday, as per usual. Uh, It's a close one, as we said before. It's a three-way kind of tie for for second place there, so obviously some big games this weekend. So uh, John will be back with us next week, hopefully, and I'll see you guys all then. Take care. Thank you, Stick around.